<laughs> you just missed it. Welcome, every- <laughs> welcome everybody to the grid. Uh, it oh, is, uh, it's the grid. I don't know what to say. Welcome. My name is Scott Kelby. Joining me today, my sidekick, Mister Eric Kuna. Thank you. Nice to see you. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing great. Great. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, you're pretty tired though, coming back from yeah. A, I, I dr- a game. So yeah, I shot the college football national championship. Yeah. I got home at 4:38 in the morning. Got up in the morning and drove 10 hours to take my kid back to college. And then I caught a plane this morning, and I came straight here, and now I'm on the grid. It's exciting, but let me tell you why we were laughing right before he came in. This is an outstanding thing I'm about to tell you. It's going to blow your mind. Are you ready? After all these years, we finally have a grid coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many times my buddy Mike Cabasi has bugged me? So he works in Hollywood, right? He's like the show for photographer for like NCIS and all this stuff. And he's like, you guys are always drinking bottles of water on your set. So lame. Why don't you get a grid coffee cup? Mike, we finally got a grid coffee cup. Thank you for bugging me. It only took five years. But that's how quickly things happen on the grid. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right before the split second as we're coming in. Maybe, Juan's, we'll, maybe we'll get new mics now. Ooh, that's next. <laughs> Juan, Juan's counting us in. Five, four, and my assistant Lynn is running with Eric's cup. She's running in slow motion. She's like, five, four, three. She puts it down, two. One and then we went live. So, so anyway, we're glad you guys are here. Today is our blind photo critiques. Uh, I will say this: we have some very good, good images yeah. today. So mm-hmm. that's really great. I'm excited to show them to you. Hey, uh, so I did get the opportunity to shoot the college football national. Give me one second to find the images here. I did get to shoot the yeah. college football holy, holy. national championship, and uh, that I, room you guys are that that media room was huge. I mean, that was like Super Bowl kind of room. Yeah, I, I was surprised. Uh, they, they, I got to tell you this, everybody like involved with the 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 the, the college football. It was it was Super Bowl level stuff. Yeah. I've been to a couple of Super Bowls. I didn't shoot. I haven't shot a Super Bowl. This is the biggest game I've ever shot. But it was Super Bowl scale, and they handled everything like the way they handled the media and stuff was absolutely first rate. They were like. 250 media people in the yeah, media it room. Huge. It was huge, but we had a great time. I'm going to just show you some pictures real quick. I'm just going to, I haven't shared any. I haven't had a chance to. I've been like just going and going and going. I'm just going to share a couple of shots here. Uh, I'm, you know, my son goes to the University, University of Alabama, Roll Tide. So I had to get a couple of Alabama shots, even though I lost. Here's the Nick Saban, coach of Alabama. This, this is before the game. He looked unhappy always. <laughs> so he's not a super smiley guy, but obviously a great coach. And I, I saw their semi outside. I had to get a picture. I'm just going to rip through these real quick just here's a fumble um from deshaun watson and there's the recovery and i, I my action shots are this one uh, made zuma's uh, one of the zuma's uh, photos of the day of uh, that is uh, bo um bo scarborough carrying in a touchdown right there and so this is interesting <laughs> i'm right there for the for the for the uh, this the, this is like good and bad at the same time i run down there to get to this particular part now um and, and this is, is, is Deshaun Watson running in a touchdown. I am right there on it. Got my 7,200. I ran down there. Guess what? I shot this at F32. As I'm running, the camera hit. Now, I usually lock my settings so this can't happen. I had to switch, uh, had to switch um, batteries. And when I turned the camera back on, I didn't. It's F32. But what's weird is there's a little bit of motion, and he's fairly he's fairly in focus. So I'll yeah. show you two of the look. Look at this. Everybody's out of That's focus, but him. It's it's weird. Yeah. So I got kind of got lucky there. Uh, and there I got some. You know, after the game shots, of course, are, are big. You can see uh, the Clemson team. They they played a great game. They really did. Even though I'm an Alabama fan, they 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 rocked it. Was it was an awesome game. So I, I like the one helmet up, and you can see national champions in the background and stuff. Um, I just love this guy's smile. He just looks so happy, so like such genuine happiness, right? And then I kind of framed this up so I could get national champions in the Clemson and the helmet. And then, I'm like, literally, I'm shooting this shot, and the, and the guy whose helmet is, he comes up and grabs it off there. He grabs it, and he goes, oh, sorry. I'm like, no, it's good. I got it. <laughs> and some, you know, Clemson fans. I just, you know, a little bit of everything. Here's a touchdown. And, <coughs> Lots of everybody, you know. And then this one was kind of nice. Um, he comes off the field, and the coach comes out to congratulate him, and they kind of shake hands real quick. I thought it was kind of nice. And, uh, you know, jubilation. I like the way there's a finger up beside it. One, we're number mm-hmm. one. 
were number one. So that that's kind of just, you know, him and Deshaun Watson sharing a moment at the end of the game. Anyway, I just want to show you a couple of picks. I I, I didn't have any time to put anything together because I, I have some nice action stuff I didn't really get in there. But anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, there was one other thing. So uh, I don't know what it is. Wow. Hi from Zimbabwe over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hi. Wow. We, so we always get a great international. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Look, we have two people from from Sweden here. We have wow. uh, Tomas and Carolyn both checking in, one from Stockholm, Sweden, and one just from Sweden in general. Uh, John is here, says, first time watching uh, John from the UK. John John Davies, we are very glad to have you here for the first time. And uh, so, uh, ooh, one, oh, can you bring that back? Sorry was uh, Ben says, hello, Scott and the gang from Bridget and Ben in Southwell, UK. Glad to have you guys here. We got Calgary in the house, BW Photography's here, home of the frozen north. There's Rob Foley. <laughs> and, uh, and is Rob Foley here? Rob yeah, Foley Lynn is Miller here. Is the best. Says Lynn M Miller is the absolute best. Dude, there's nobody to get you a cup faster to your set. I've never seen anyone move that fast. Mm -hmm. She is the reigning cup delivery specialist is, is it's, it's right on her business card when will the mugs be available to ko Mer we were just talking, we were about, just talking that. about that we're just yeah. talking about that so oh was, can i mention which this is the we should talk about the webcast yeah coming out so for today so yeah today today at six o'clock we are doing a private kelby one members only webcast to talk about what we have in store for 2017 so we're rolling out our plan for 2017 it's for members only at six o'clock today go check your email for an invitation but that's it right there it's the 2017 roadmap we have some very exciting things that, that we have not shared that we want to share with you and we will be sharing today in that members only web class including where to get your where to buy your grid mugs yeah. so uh but that's uh, that's coming up today kathy bateson is here from ireland kathy glad to have you with us and uh fran hughes is here fran missed last week and is well everybody was quite upset jen was in tears the entire she was she was what is it unconsolable or inconsolable Nobody knows. She you know what? Our specialty is not English and other big words. Oh, wait. My editor's here. Is it in? In. in. Yeah, my editor's like, it's in, idiot. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have some giveaways at the end of the show. We've got some gift cards from Lens Pro to go. They're here somewhere. They're here somewhere. We have gift cards from Lens Pro to Go. We're going to give away two $50 gift cards from Lens Pro to Go, the fine people at Lens Pro to Go. They are all awesome, awesome people. It's where you go to rent like cameras and lenses mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, we're going to give away a Platypod Max Pro, which is also not here. <laughs> but it's awesome. But That's you know really what cool. is here? And Kim's going to get a picture of it. Let me turn towards Kim. That's right. It's my brand new book. The Photoshop CC book for digital photographers. It's new. It's available now in a bookstore near you or Amazon or BarnesandNoble.com, BN.com, anywhere you want. And I think Kim has gotten her picture there. I had to hold it for a long time. She takes a lot of pictures. She shoots in bursts. Anyway. <laughs> Today is uh, Blind Photo Critique Day. We're going to take a short break. We're going to go right into them. Uh, we're going to cover a lot today, um, so I'm going to just crank right on through them. Uh, we have some good ones, and we have some people I think that we can we can give some really good help to help them improve. It's mm -hmm. going to be a fun day. Stick around. We'll be right back on the grid. Eric's here. Boom. Right Boom. there. There he is. Oops. I've been here four times. I continue to learn new and fabulous things about photography and Photoshop and Lightroom. If you come here with one thing on your mind, you're probably going to end up leaving with interest in other areas. You want to stay in the know and stay on the cutting edge. This is the place to do it. Anyone that has a passion for creative things, photography, design, they attend Photoshop World. I'm Kaylee Greer of Dog Breath Photography. When people look through my images, they typically ask me, what in the world? How are all these dogs that you photograph so perfectly well behaved? Are these magical dogs from a magical land? Well, I gotta tell you, no, <laughs> they're not. They're real dogs. We're gonna work with multiple dogs and getting them all in one really nice group shot together. We're gonna work with a wild, crazy, untamed puppy. We're going to work with a black and a white dog together. We're also gonna deal with a fearful, skittish shelter dog. Photographing dogs, as you know, can be incredibly challenging. Oh! Oh, wow! Situations that you would have to deal with in any normal oh, dog photo shoot. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Difficult dogs, real world scenarios. Wow! <laughs> it got loud! <laughs> Difficult dogs, real world scenarios. 
Join me and my class on KelbyOne.com. Hey everybody, we're, we're back. Scott Kelby here, and my co-host today is Mr. Eric Kuna. Hey, nice to see you. Kuna. Hey, Eric, you're not really seeing them. Well. We can feel I mean. you, though. We can feel you. Except for Susan Stein. Susan, who's listening from Manhattan. She's it's, listening. So here's the thing, Susan. You need to engage with the show. Don't let it run in the background, Susan. Don't listen. Susan, I need you to watch. Engage. I don't mean with a man. I mean you need to actually watch the show. All hey, right. Gerg, that Gerg 1967 is watching from Just Boring Atlanta. Hey, don't That's say Just quote, Boring Atlanta. Quote, unquote. Well, I love Atlanta. The ATL is awesome. I'm going to be in Atlanta this weekend shooting the NFL playoff game. I'm going to be shooting with the Falcons on, um, what you call it, uh, on Saturday. So I'll be shooting the Falcons-Seahawks game in Atlanta this nice. Saturday. I am, I'm excited. Nice. Um, Another one from Sweden. Christian from Sweden. We're, this is our day for Sweden, Sweden today. Yeah. Love Sweden. I've been to Stockholm. What an amazing city. Super nice people. Super great food. Cool architecture. And uh, they've got this big sunken boat. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, all right. Hey, Gabe, this is Gabe's first live show. And so uh, is that new book coming to digital or is it paperback only? It's both, Gabe. It's, it's, it's a... Um, if you get it direct from the publisher, they have it in every format. But if you go to Amazon, they have it in Kindle. So it should be there. There's and Eric, another Eric right there. Another Eric there hey, says, Eric. Uh, says, just became a member of Kelby One from Friendship, Wisconsin. And so, uh, and he's saying hi to us. And Susan's, she's saying she's here. She's All paying, right, she's Susan. There, okay. So. All right, Susan. Okay. All right, we're good now. <laughs> we can start. All right, here we go. So here's what we're doing. We're doing blind photo critiques. We have asked our uh, viewers to send in their images for a blind critique. So we, we don't know your name. We don't even ask you. Well, I mean, we don't know. I don't see your name. I just see screenshots of your images. So I don't know who you are, and that helps me to be able to give an honest critique so I can just, you know, tell you really how I feel. Um, but I, I'm trying trying to do it not to be mean. Um, I'm trying to help you make better pictures. Uh, Constructive. The, but, but most people will never tell anybody yeah. you know, the truth. So for those of you, I know some of you are watching for the first time, the reason why we do these blind is so we can tell the truth. Right. Because you know, your spouse and your friends aren't going to go, yeah, your stuff sucks. You know? So we're, we're not trying to tell anybody their stuff sucks. Uh, hey, David's here from Italy. Alan's here from Puerto Rico. Michelle's here from Toronto. Man, we got the international the crowd. crowd. I love the international crowd. And Atlanta. Here we go. <laughs> First one, let's take a look. All right, we have three images here, and that's what we've asked people to send in. We're just going to take a look at the three real quick. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. So, so I would say, uh, obviously, good photographer. Yeah. Um, the, uh, there are two, uh, the, and you know what? I mean, you're obviously a pretty accomplished photographer, and you're doing some and really you're nice putting stuff. Putting yourself in front of interesting stuff. Yeah, you're putting yeah. yourself in. That's I love this waterfall. Yeah. You're put, and, and I like you've got nice foreground. You're doing a lot of things right. I got two things that'll help you. They're they're pretty minor, but I think that they could make a big impact. Number one is on this photo. Number one, you're. Your horizon line is kind of right in the middle, and, and that's not awful. It's not killing this shot. Normally, a horizon line in the middle is wah, 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 but I understand that you're trying to compose it with this, this wood, the, this tree mm -hmm. feature. But I tell you what would make this thing just rock. You are an ND filter away from rocking mm -hmm. this. So if you look, you have a little bit of, of wispiness yeah. in the ocean. You need like a, like a 10 stop with a three stop on top of it or something. You need a heavy heavy because this is an interesting tree i like the colors i like the way you composed it over to the side I, i'm not mm. crazy about your horizon line but i think that you might have had to kind of put it there in which case you could get lower and move it or you can get higher and move it and you probably took this standing but that's not the problem with this photo <coughs> and, the, and the really there's not a problem with this photo but to make it better i tell you yeah. what a longer exposure ooh that would be sweet. So if you could get a minute or two minutes out of this, I'm telling you, an ND filter, and, and this thing goes from good to great. That's how close you are. Oh, yeah. And uh, honestly, I would go for a longer exposure here too. Mm -hmm. I, you have a, a relatively long exposure, but also I think the image is a tad too bright. I'm just going to yeah. duplicate it, and I'm going to go to multiply mode. I'm going to lower this and make it maybe right there. Yeah. Now, I don't know what it looks like on the particular screen that you're viewing it on, but this seems overexposed, and this seems about right. It so, seems right for that scene. Yeah. yeah, it seems right for the scene because Especially the scene is light coming yeah. through the trees. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, also, if it were if it were me, I, I would just kind of, I would kind of clean up this little junk here. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like you got some little sticks coming in and some little junk over here. It's minor stuff because, I mean, you're a good photographer. So, But if I was going to make these a little better, a little long exposure, a longer exposure, and kind of clean up some of this little bit of junk, uh, this last one is, is pretty good. It's just... I don't know if you need all of this over here. I think a recrop might make this stronger because mm -hmm. what are you really shooting? A waterfall. So th this yeah, over here is kind of kinda, there. yeah, exactly. That's the word I was looking. It's kind of boring over there. I think we can make this a lot stronger yeah. by cropping it. But good job. I think I think yeah. you are off and running. So good job. And uh, I'm gonna just give me a second yeah. here, and I'm gonna hey, we're gonna we're gonna take a couple of comments. Maybe Eric will take these comments while I'm uh, just cranking yeah, up sure. the next one. Uh, so we had a comment about your just one flash class and um, said, um, I appreciate you start with the basics of flash and flash modifiers and show the next steps. Um, and just basically giving you props for your just one flash. Oh, class, well, thank which, you. <laughs> which we have been getting a lot of a uh, lot of good feedback on that just one flash class. I, I am mean, glad I love had a that. lot of fun doing that. And I think class. what people love about it is what he was saying there is you start at the basics and kind of build up on it and you just need one flash and who doesn't have a flash, you know? Well, that's the thing is I on my tour I've been asking people and people own a flash and they don't like it and 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 I try to so I built a class a class around you probably have a flash and you're probably not in love with it and so I want to make this class to try to make you fall in love with flash. Uh, so right, and then John was saying basically <laughs> that uh, I only want good things said about my pictures <laughs> when, when it is blind photo praise day. All right. Hey, John, if you go to Flickr and post your images every day blind is blind photo, photo, photo praise, praise day. day. Go, yeah. go to Flickr and it's just, they just, it's just a hug. Everyone that sees you, doesn't matter what your stuff is. They're like, you're magical. Okay. Um, let's if take a look. If you want it torn apart, go to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, one sort of part. Go, go post All right, on let's take a look at these three images right here. Number one, number two, number three. Okay, I th I think we got some stuff that'll help you. Uh, this is mm -hmm. is my favorite of the three. But what's the happening here good. is I like the yeah. lighting. I like the lighting. Uh, but you've you yeah, cut off. Bottomized. <laughs> now you can absolutely cut off the head. You can absolutely do it, but it's where you cut it yeah. off. You cut it off kind of in a, in an odd place. You need to e either go a third or two thirds. This it, it just it it looks too tight. It looks like his head has been sliced open. Yeah. So all you have to do here is. I would just balance it out. If you're already going to cut some of his arm off here and leave part of an arm, I would go ahead and, and crop this up a little bit. Go ahead and take it to yeah. there and then like add more. Yeah, yeah kind of just split the crop and add more there. Your light is pretty good. Uh, all the others, the background's good. I, th I think you got something here. It's just a little bit, a little bit of fixing that the crop, and I think I you're like good here. It up a little bit, like you know, kind of like because there's a little bright at the bottom. Oh yeah, well it's yeah. it's it's a little yeah. His shirts now. I don't yeah. know what the, if you were really trying to to play up the shirt or yeah, not. Exactly. But, but I think Eric's right. If you darken this down here, that would certainly help. Mm -hmm. uh, over here, this this is just it. It's kind of it's a cute cute snapshot yeah it, it it's very crooked and so and and the crooked look is a little mm -hmm. a little played um unless you're shooting an indy car so here's what i would do number one i want to see them they're the star of the show not the mm -hmm. not the forest you can still put them in a forest let's straighten them out a bit something more like that because really cute kid and she's got a beautiful smile mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good things going on here uh and I think I would have tried to minimize this red area. It's really catching your eye. And I would have had her, and you, you would have to do this during the pose. You'd have to say, yeah. okay, can you tuck your legs back a little bit? Because it, it really is taking away from her beautiful smile and the interaction between the two of them. But really, the, the shot isn't really about the forest. You want the, to see that they are in a forest, uh, but you don't want to see that they're falling over to the left in the forest. Uh, the last one is this one is is very cute we we can fix this with some cropping so we have some cropping issues um issue here is yeah, you're, you're you're cropping just oh just past the elbows you'd mm -hmm. be better off to crop above them it looks more natural but you've got a really bad color issue here uh her skin looks bluish and that is like think about this on a television show when they want somebody to look dead they they use blue makeup. Blue, yeah. They white or blue makeup to make you look sick or blue. So I think what we could do is I'm just going to open up. Well, you the, could definitely uh, fix the color. Yeah, the color. Yeah, the is just colors. Way off. So let's go and warm her up. She looks cold. 
So let's get the, her, her skin tone better. It, also, she looks very green now. So let's go, move away from green and see if we can get a... There, that's a, a better skin. It's not the awesome, perfect skin tone, but we're better. Mm -hmm. Then let's crop this. Let me go ahead and click that. And I want to show you before and after on her skin. Right, so that, that certainly is better. Right. Uh, then let's go in here with the crop tool and let's get it tighter here, but let's get above those elbows, like right in there. And we put her over a little to the side and I think you, you've got a strong, in fact, I think you could crop up a little tighter now that I look at it. I think you could even go maybe up here because she's not doing anything yeah. with her hands and I think you, you, you would have a much stronger image. And like, depending on which monitor I look on, her skin tone looks good on my laptop. It looks not so good on the screen I'm looking at over there. It's, it's gonna depend. But it, it looks a lot. It, Point being, it looks a lot better. I mean, it's yeah. definitely, you just got to watch that. It's not yeah. too, like, um, bluish and not too. It, yeah, it's skin got that tone blue when it comes and that people, green. It, yikes. It looks yeah. kind of, like, um, sickly. Yeah. yeah. And and her pose is kind of cute. Uh, I think that if you work the situation a little, you'd probably get her, give you a little bit more, you know, with her facial expression. But I think those are some easy things you can fix really quickly, and it'll make all those images better. So. Mm -hmm. So there's, I see some good stuff there, some good potential. All right, let's take a look at another one. Um, let's see where we're at here. Do we look at these? We got somebody from Seminole, Florida. Finally getting to watch from Seminole. All right, <laughs> let's take a look at these three right here. It's Al Mitchell. All right, so we got three images here. We've got this one. That's crooked. <laughs> we've, we've got this one. And we've got this one, which is crooked. So you're very big on crooked horizon lines. Mm -hmm. So it drives people crazy when you have a crooked image. Now, I would say this. This is by far the strongest one of the three. Yeah. I love the like the atmosphere There's and the mist like and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But if you look at the horizon line, guys, this horizon line stuff, it drives people crazy. And sometimes they won't even be able to articulate what it is they don't like about your photo. But... I, I can tell you, a straight horizon line, I mean, this is why they sell so many accessories on for tripods that you put on your camera so you can make sure your pictures are straight, why there's a bubble level on your tripod, and if there's not, uh, most of today's reasonably uh, new uh, cameras actually have a level built in them. This this is kind of... It almost looks like it was cropped, so you probably had more to it. Right, probably yeah. could have straightened but out look that at horizon. this. Look how, how crooked this horizon line actually is. Yeah. It is... Now, when we crop it here, it's going to, yeah, of course... Gonna... It takes the image away. Yeah. yeah, it's now it's straight, but you've cropped off the hooves and stuff. So I don't know what the original image looked like, but that needs some cropping fix. This... I really like the colors... Even though we know the snow was not that blue, the snow is reacting to your white balance setting. Well, you also but have the foreground problem this, where it's just yeah. like so... And come on. what What is this? Yeah. You left a stick at the bottom. God, come on. You got to get rid of that. You know, it, we, what do we call it? Border patrol or, yeah. you know, uh, you're in charge of policing the borders. Yeah. I see the whole image. I know what you're looking at right here. You're going, look at this. Look at the blue and the colors. And, all. and you're right. That's all good. This is killing your photo. This isn't helping your photo a lot. Yeah. Because it's so, it's, it is your foreground. Your foreground's blurry. And when people see things in the foreground that are out of focus, it's kind of distracting. Uh, yeah, I don't that's know what it is. It's just so distracting let's to just, the image. Yeah. So let's just kind of crop this out of the way. And, and just I'm, all I can do is really minimize it. That's still not good. Yeah. All right, Th this this one's got some some issues. Uh, this one needs to be straightened, and this one, I don't know. It's a boat in the harbor at night, and it's crooked. Mm. It's you know, it's like the whole thing looks like it's leaning to the left. The buildings and all everything's going to crash over. Um, but so what's interesting is you you don't have a exposure problem. You don't really have a problem. You you understand how to use your camera. You're getting good exposures. You're getting nice color. Now it's time to be worried about the little stuff. So I think you got the big stuff licked, which is good because a lot of people don't can't get the big stuff. Um, so I think it's time to let's let's just kind of look at the. Uh, it's the detail stuff. It's it, like the, you know, keeping that horizon straight. Yeah, it's the a little stuff. Foreground elements and focus. Yeah. And on this know. boat shot, it's just, there's just not much. It's just kind of looks kind of, the sky isn't, there's nothing really super interesting in here unless you're a boat lover. If you go, oh, it's a tall ship and I really love those and all. But it's, I mean, I think that 
on, on a different night, you might be able to get a lot better picture. Oh, yeah, that's uh, got that overcast sky with the yeah, light reflecting. Yeah. I don't know. It's just I think you can do better because I, I've seen that you can do better. Uh, this is really, it's a terrific shot. Fix the horizon line. And if the ca horizon line can't be fixed, it's still a terrific shot. But the fact that you have a terrific shot makes me think, okay, you got an eye. And this is, I know that you're drawn to the color, but there's more. We see the whole picture, not just the color. So, but uh, anyway, not badly. I think I think you just got a little stuff to to work on. Look at that. Phyllis Phyllis says, raise his hands on crooked horizon lines. It makes me twitch. Yeah. Uh, Lee says, wouldn't the horse be crooked if you straightened the horizon? Absolutely. You saw us do it. But I think that that the photo looks cropped anyway. It wasn't shot like that in the camera. Yeah. Right. It wasn't shot like at that. So something was already cropped. Yeah, it and looks like it was already cropped yeah. down to that. It, right. Because it almost it had a cropped wider in. size. To and it, and Bjorg is here from Norway. First time watcher. Hey, glad to have you here, Bjorn. I'm loving all these new folks. This is awesome. <laughs> Matt's uh, addressing a home issue uh, for his flooded kitchen. He said, thanks to Kelby One, I'm going to have the best looking photo I ever submitted ever? to insurance. Oh, oh <laughs> Matt. Oh, no. He's, sorry he, to hear that. Oh, Matt. I'm sorry to hear that. But, you know. Hey, when I had to take insurance photos, I was like, I got to light this. I'm going to need some more lights. <laughs> okay. All right. It so there we go. Sad. So that, that was good. If you want to check out, I'm going to go ahead and get the next one, Eric, if you want to look at some uh, yeah. comments there. So Becky from Cali was saying that love the removing distractions class too. So thank you. Another Becky. thanks. Uh, Johan. Johan saying just saw the one flash, one flash class too. And great class. Still love, not loving my flash. All right. Johan, <laughs> did, you, did you practice? Did you get out and do something? Because yeah. I know it's freezing where Johan is. Johan is in the Netherlands. Johan, you got to practice this stuff in the class. You can't watch the class and go, well, I don't love it. What makes you love it is doing the things in the class. Johan, I'm talking to you. Practice. Don't just watch. You didn't say, I saw the class, I tried it, and I'm not loving it. <laughs> got to try it. It's the, missing, it's the missing link, Johan. All right, here we go. Take a look. We have three classes today. They look very, the shots look very commercial. This one looks very commercial. This one looks very commercial. This one is just very nice. All right, mm -hmm. so here's where I'm at because you're obviously a, a, an accomplished photographer. So you're, you're not new to this. And so, but the photography is nice. The post-processing, you're way over retouching the images. Her skin, and I can see that you're using, um, the, my, my mind is shot this week. All I can think of is football terms. Mm -hmm. You're using uh, frequency separation to do the uh, her skin, but you've just overdone it. The skin is just, it's just too far. It's, you got to find a way to back that off. So let's just say that, that frequency separation goes from 1 to 10. You're at a 9, and you need to be at like a 6. So it's just, I mean, I, I like the posing and I like your lighting. The lighting here is beautiful. The lighting's good. The posing's good. I like the way you got nice highlights in the back of her hair. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other one here, it looks very nice. You got a nice commercial look to it. But the skin is just, it's like plastic. It's just, it's just too, well, if you're it's too much. Too, you could clean up some of these edges here. Oh, yeah, you could clean up some. Uh, I mean, if you're uh, going to go that far on know, the skin. I'm thinking, you know. and I was thinking the background might be a little too bright. Yeah, if you're going to go that far on the skin, take the time that you were spending yeah, on like the skin and fix Take 20% less. Take some of this little fly away stuff here you can leave a little bit of it but that's a little bit much uh and also i'd work on the eyes a little bit right in there and everything else is overdone and a couple of things are underdone so it's just a matter of balancing these things but so taking the, like the skin retouching yeah. down about 20 30 yeah, percent oh yeah at least yeah i would say maybe take the skin retouching down by about 40 percent 40 you can still retouch the skin, but it's just it's just like over the top kind of stuff. But the photography is, is very good. Um, this one is it took me a minute when I saw it to figure out what's going on because I can't the hat is so underexposed that I can't tell that she's wearing a hat. Now I don't know how you guys can see it viewing at home uh, or at work or wherever you're viewing it, but yeah, uh, it's, I can't I can't tell on your laptop. Yeah, you, the, I'm gonna I'm just going to see if I can bring it out a little bit just to give you an idea. Let's do yep. one more. Uh, so it. now I'm going to merge those together, and I'm going to paint in just the hat. If I can, it's probably going to be tough to do. But if you can bring out that hat so we can see, oh, that's why her eyes are top of her head's cut off. There's a hat. 
And that's not an awesome job of doing but it. But you're trying to get the, the point. Yeah, actually, I'm going maybe... to spill over and then go back and clean it up. That would probably be easier because it's hard to see, you know, a black hat on that black background. But you need to bring that out. And then I can see there's a hat and it completes the rest of the image. And on both of the monitors I'm looking here, you could not really see the hat. Yeah, I couldn't see and it. And on the monitor I'm looking on over here in the studio, we had a big monitor. Um, I can still barely see the hat, but at least now I kind of go, oh, she's wearing a hat. But other than that, I think it's really cool the way you're only using the backlights for the lighting uh, and the way it wraps around her face yeah, and lights. On, turn that off and turn it back yes, on. Yes, turn it off and turn it on. Yeah, I see how it's like yeah, it's like gone. Yeah, like it's gone. And then now you, you see yeah, a little bit of it. And really, for the monitor, I'm looking at it, it needs that. It needs two of yeah. them. But I like the concept. I, mm -hmm. I think your photography is very good. So I think you are well on your way. Just make those couple little changes, and I think you're, you're going to step up your work pretty, pretty big there. So good, good job on you. Uh, and uh, so, and Robin's photo said, "Wow, first time out and get the first review. That was intense. <laughs> that was intense. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I hope I hope you found it helpful. I don't want to. I don't want it to be just intense. But uh, all right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is a nice one. I want to open these real quick here. John Mayfield said, "Flicker, it's like a hug. Should be their new slogan." <laughs> All right, so this is a very nice image. It looks like Iceland or someplace, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but that looks very nice. There's a really mm -hmm. nice long exposure. It's a nice clean scene with a beautiful sky. And this has the potential to be boring, but I kind of think it's kind of interesting. I mean, you want to talk about an example for leading lines? Well, there you mm -hmm. go. Uh, I do like the kind of way it goes off into the mist, and mm -hmm. I think this has got some, some juice, actually. And, um, and this is, of course, the beautiful sky and the leading lines. And the, these are all very well, you know, well-crafted photos and nice job. I don't really have anything to, to tell you. It's just, you know, keep, keep up the good work. You're still, uh, and, and there's a spot on my screen, but is it? Okay, it's, mm -hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was a spot on my screen. I'm thinking that's not in this picture because everything looks very clean. Nice job. I, yeah, mean, I know nice. that's, I hate to just say nothing, but keep doing what you're doing because it's, it's good. Um, and if you'll look at some comments, yeah. I'll grab the, uh, the next set here. So Southern Blood 82 was saying they finally got your book and uh, in love with it. So another praise on that. Yay, go to Amazon and tell other people. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. That would be awesome. Okay. Uh, whoop, one more. Sorry, I, I missed so, it. So um, we got a comment of where can they send your photos over to. Um, what's, what's the link if we do have the blind critique? Uh, I, I, I posted on my Facebook and on my Twitter uh, the day before. So yesterday yeah, so I posted just follow, them. follow you on Facebook Yeah, just go on Facebook or my Twitter account the day before. I go, hey, tomorrow we're doing – now, we announced it last week we were doing it this week. Mm -hmm. But that's where we posted on, on – if you follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash skelby. It looks like skelby. Um, Jock's Photo asks, Scott, why does content aware not work on some pics? You know what it is? Content aware, if you've got the right kind of photo with kind of a non-distracting background, works amazingly. But there's no way for it to, and I think people don't realize, there's no way for it to recreate something. Like, it doesn't know that behind that thing was a table. Now, if the table goes here, and then it picks up over here, sometimes it'll go, oh, there should be table in between. Mm -hmm. But it, there's no way, sometimes, like, people will send me things and go, content aware didn't work, and I'm like, there was no way it could know there was someone standing behind there and what they look like. So it's, it's you know, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, do it. Kathy Bateson, I've never sent in photos to be critiqued. Must do it sometime. Yes, you should. And Kathy, I won't know it's you. So <laughs> send them in. So Matt, Matt's asking about color adjustments. Um, how important is it to calibrate your monitor? Is All right. it necessary to calibrate uh, laptops, external monitors? So here's the thing, Matt. Matt, I, th I think calibrating your monitor, so that's where we're answering the question with color adjustments, how important is it to calibrate your monitor? Mm -hmm. It is very important if you're making a print. If you want your printer to match your screen, I think it's very important that they look the same. But Matt, I'll tell you what, I, I, honestly, go to, go to Best Buy and stand in there and look at all the TVs and then go look at all the computer monitors in the computer department. Everyone looks different. You can yeah. get, you can be in a special room with special lighting and a special screen. You can get it looking perfect for you. You're the only person that's going to see it like that. When you take this image and you put it on the internet, you put it on the web for people to view, they're going to see it however their monitor looks. Now, it's nice for yours to be in the ballpark, but honestly, I stopped calibrating my monitor two years ago. 
Let's see. Yeah, I'm an old school video person, so we're if like... I'm going to print, <laughs> like if I'm going to make a bunch of prints. Now, I will say this: my monitor is so close to the printer we use here. We use a yeah. Canon printer in here, and it is so close. I'll bet it's within three percent of the color accuracy. And with no, with the standard just Mac stuff. They're on getting it. they're getting a lot better. They're getting so a lot much better. better. And a lot of times I'm just doing simple calibrations, but I always have to calibrate something. You know, just back from the day, back. What in the I have day. to do is adjust for brightness. Yeah. I have to make the images brighter. But honestly, like I, unless you're doing printing. Now, I, I would, again, I'm very lucky that my Canon printer and my Mac monitor, and by the way, Mac monitors are very consistent. Like my monitor yeah. looks like Eric's monitor looks, Macs, all their monitors look the same. Very but similar, the, But yeah. the whole world's looking at your stuff on different computers, so. I just can't get away from I'll not people, calibrating. I'll, I don't know. I'll let people make a screen capture and send it to me. Yeah. And, and like my picture that I saw on my screen that was perfect is like, two stops overexposed and they're like you missed a cleanup over here and i'm like what are you looking at what kind of monitor are the you know anyway so it's um, true though i mean you could calibrate it to the cows come home and then oh, you're yeah. gonna get it to somebody's computer and they're gonna look at it and be like oh it's terrible all right hey we have i'm i may be saying this wrong hope not amen from is enjoying the show from cairo egypt wow so thank you for watching very, very cool. much all right so let's take a look at the next image here we go uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, this is uh, three different shots. Wildlife -y shots. I like them. I like them too. I like your color. I the like detail. your detail and yeah. your sharpness. Yeah. Uh, you got the eye in focus, and this is just this is very nice. Now, someone that was going to be really crit color critical might go, "Well, this needs to be color corrected." You shot this on auto white balance which makes anything in the shade, and this is the other side of the animal, mm -hmm. so it makes it blue, and that's not correct. So let's go, let's go get rid of it, then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you. So I'm gonna go and like color correct this with using the eyedropper tool. Yeah, that right there is probably more like the real color, right? So this is all gray in here, right? Mm -hmm. That being said, I like it better with the blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I think the blue looks <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. I think the blue looks really nice with the green in the background. So from an artistic side, I really like it, and I like I like the the, mm -hmm. the toning and all. And and this is a shot of a kitten. Anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, they're all nicely done, and that uh, this is good stuff. But it I, is. It's good detail. Good, yeah, I no, mean, good job. Way to go. All right. <laughs> Someone wrote the kitten wins the grid tonight. <laughs> Uh, someone asked, do I recommend a flat or gloss, glossy screen? So for many years, I had a flat screen, and I was very concerned that when I got a glossy screen, it'd be weird. I could not go back to a flat screen now. Yeah. Uh, the glossy screens are awesome. They make your images look so beautiful. They also make other people's look images look beautiful. Uh, I mean, I think, it says, I think it says it right there. Flat. Or glossy. or glossy. I don't want my images to look flat. You and especially, flat or I tell you what, when you <laughs> see your other work on somebody else's machine, if you're a Mac person, you see it on another Mac, it looks like you saw it. But if you see it on someone's like Windows PC, and Windows PCs are all over the, all over the, you know, you've got every different brand and all. They, some look green, some look blue, some, some look, look awesome. dark, some look awesome. Some look awesome. Oh, I'm not saying that they all look yeah. bad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's all over the place where Macs are very consistent, yeah. whether you have an iMac. No, you're right. Uh, that's one a thing. A PowerBook. Whatever Mac you have, it looks the same all the time. But you're right. More often than not, they don't look good. Right. They, you're <laughs> like, whoa. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's go and uh, drop over here. Hey, someone's asking me when I do calibrate, what do I use? I use like the the, the latest Spider, yeah, Spider Five, I, use the I think. Spider at home. Yeah, but I don't. I just don't use it that. Now, often. a lot of times, if I'm just doing in between, I, I'll even calibrate just to my eye, you know. Oh yeah, just to match. You can do that yeah. too. All right. Well, I just like when they do the work for you. Yeah. I prefer that they did it. All right, here we go. Three shots. All right. After this, we got to take a break too. Yeah, I think a break's good. A break would be appropriate. Here we go. One. Two. Oh, there's a somebody Whoa, like para, paragliding, paragliding or whatever. Yeah. yeah, three. So if I have my druthers, you, you, the first two are interesting. I like that you've got this cloud layer, and then you've mm -hmm. got this. But this this picture on my screen looks overexposed. I, I would have to do yeah. that thing where you go in here and uh, use multiply mode. And by the way, I'm not running my my. I never run my laptop at full brightness, but it, it looks like it needs to be a little darker. 
I don't know what you're seeing on your screen, but a little darker would make it a little more yeah. mysterious and more interesting. Uh, and then you might, what you could do is you can add a layer mask and bring out this reflection if you wanted right here. Bring it back to the original and stuff. And maybe the, the bridge, the bridge spires too. But anyway, that's kind of sloppy, but you get the idea. But that's kind of nice. I mean, I kind of, that's an interesting thing you don't see very often. But making those this changes, is, it looks a lot better. This is nice. It just, uh, the post-processing needs a little work on these, but the photography is very good. And this is only interesting because it's kind of an aerial like shot, but it's this is the weakest of the three, uh, and it's not a bad shot, but it's not like super awesome. It's just like oh okay, yeah. I think part of it, most of it with those is post processing. Yeah, a little bit of post processing work. Work on your post a little bit because I th I think you've got some nice shots. I think you've captured some kind of interesting stuff. So that's that's uh, that's pretty good. Hey. Um, Dana says, a brightness always gets me. They look fine until I print or post, and then they look darker than they should be. So, Dana, here, here's why that's happening. You, you have a backlit monitor. Mm -hmm. It's very, very bright, super bright. Today's monitors are super bright. And I uh, just wanted to check my brightness. I, have it, I keep it down two clicks from the top. Um, but what mm -hmm. happens is then you go and print on something that's not backlit, and it's flat and all. So, it, Dana, in, in Lightroom, in the print module, under the print panel, and there's actually two sliders at the bottom. One's called brightness, and one's called contrast. Uh, it'll always print darker than your screen, but what's cool about those two particular sliders, Dana, is it only affects the print. You're not actually changing how the image looks. So if you crank it way up in the print and go look at the, the develop module, your image doesn't look different. Mm -hmm. It only does the brightening when, um, when you send it to press, right? So when you actually go and send it to, it's not to press, to print. When you send it to print, then it does the brightening. So uh, that that works wonders. And and I have to crank do mine up. Do you do that most of the time? Absolutely. Yeah. I how, always How far do, do you that. crank it up? For my printer, I probably go a third of the way or, or maybe yeah. a little slightly more, uh, somewhere in there. And, and it's a great match. But without it, every single print looks So your recommendation dark. there would be just kind of like, bump it up a little bit no you gotta print. do a test print yeah you gotta do, do a, a test, test print, print. That's do a test up, print like test bump print. it up to half like increase the brightness by half do a test print and you'll know and you'll back it off a little and and, and boom, yeah there you go there would you be done all right we're gonna take a short break when we come back we're gonna look at, at more images and we're gonna have to kind of wrap up on time today so we're gonna i'm mm -hmm. going through them pretty quick but we we because we have the private members only webcast at six on a different set uh, we have to make sure we have everything lit and ready to go for that so i have to kind of finish on time which you know i hate to do we're gonna take a short break uh don't go away we'll be right back on the grid i'm amanda powell and i'm a wedding photographer out of sarasota florida one thing that captured my attention when i first discovered kelby one's website was the array of professionals that they used to teach the photography each individual class was extremely organized. It was from start to finish. I feel comfortable with the photographers that they support. For me, it's a relationship. You establish them and they last a lifetime. I'll bet you, you've got an off-camera flash. You know what else I'll bet? I bet you're not in love with it. You've used it a couple of times. It didn't get the results you wanted. I want to help you. You know what I want to do? I want to make you fall in love with your flash and that's what this class is all about. It's called Just One Flash because everybody's got at least just one flash. We're gonna go on location like we are here. We're gonna be in the studio, but we're gonna start off and I'm gonna give you all the foundation. I'm gonna give you shortcuts, I'm gonna give you the whole thing, and it's right here exclusively at Kelby One. Hey guys, Christy from Shark Pixel here, and come join me and my shark squad April 20th through 22nd in Orlando for Photoshop World before I get eaten. Hey, we're back uh, live on the grid. Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna. Hey, how's it going? Kuna. Dave's and, uh, here. Oh, Dave, Dave Clayton's, Clayton's here. here. Evening, says, Dave evening. Clayton. Yeah. Hi, Dave. We love Dave. Dave's awesome. He is, Dave is kind of like, you know who Dave reminds me of? Um, oh, I don't know what's wrong with my mind. Dave reminds me of someone. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, I can't. I, don't I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know. All right. Hey, there's a brand new class that, uh, you know, every Thursday we come out with a brand new class. This week is turn your portrait photos into paintings. So Heather Chin uh, is, uh, did a class using Corel Painter, because that's kind of what everybody uses to do this trick, to turn 
to turn uh, portraits into paintings because that's like quite a big thing with the portrait crowd and with the wedding crowd mm -hmm. and with newborns and different stuff. So the course is uh, apparently it's live right now. It's uh, supposed it's to come there. out Thursday, but you know sometimes we put them up early. But uh, every week we have a new course and that's this new one. So go We've check it out. We've been getting a little ahead of the game lately. Yeah, yeah. we have been getting a little yeah. ahead of the game. That's, that's the game. good. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at our next topic. We're doing blind photo critiques. If you just joined us, as Marie has Marie France from Quebec. Yay! First time I watch live. Thank you. Marie, we are very glad to have you here. All right, so this is a little wedding photography here. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so uh, not bad stuff, not bad at all. Uh, I would think that maybe, let me see. This one here is my favorite of the three. Mine too, yeah. Uh, I like that they're sharing a moment together, and I really like the back lighting, and the lighting's very subtle on them, and the cake's over there, and he's he's cutting the cake with a giant sword. Is that a sword? Yeah, it is. Wow. So he's cutting it with a giant sword, and like, you know. That's and, a, not, yeah. and what's weird is he's not even looking at it, so he could easily slip and just cut off her arm. It'd be horrible. But uh, anyway, this is a nice photo. I like the nice wideness of it, and I like the, the lighting that's very nicely mm -hmm. done. Um, this one and the next one, my, I think where you can really pick up your game here is, is softening the lighting. Mm -hmm. So I think that the lighting looks a little bit harsh. So uh, if you could kind of back, because if you look like she's shining, if you look in the picture, she's kind of shiny. They got hot spots on their face and stuff. And the light, you can just see, it's a little harsh. You can it see, just looks like look at the blasted. hard shadow here. Yeah, blast. like you blasted it. Blast. And, and I, would be, I would be perfectly fine with you putting the light in right here, get it nice and close, and then take a second shot where you move the light out and then you know edit it there. I like that you didn't let the light spill everywhere. That's kind of nice. If you look the light, part of the light is good in that it fades away, right? Mm -hmm. uh, her dress is also blue. That's not good. His shirt is blue. The blueness is not good. Let's go fix that. Well, it just kind of a little bit screams flash. Yeah. You know, just screams well, this is, a, this is a white balance issue here. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, whoops. Let's just, well, there's a couple of ways. Uh, one thing you can do, and I talked about this, you can paint with white balance. So move away from blue, and when you paint in yellow, it will mm -hmm. remove the blue. And now that's too yellow. So but that's okay. We can go back and dial it in to where it's, it becomes white. Right there. Oops, and it's still maybe a little blue. And then same thing with his shirt. His shirt, I don't think his shirt was blue. I'm going to guess that his shirt was white. But anyway, or you can just do, uh, you can just, instead of painting with light, you can go and paint with lowered saturation. So let's just do that instead. Let me hit the saturation and, uh, and kind of get rid of that blue cast that's on there. Cause, and now, uh, the reason why I think his shirt should be white, because it could, could be light blue, but because her dress, wedding dresses, you don't ever want to hear the bride go, why is my dress blue? Mm -hmm. They don't like that. All right, there we go. That would fix this. Also, I think you could have come in tighter on your crop. I think on your crop itself, I think you could have come in and still kept some of the... I would actually move them over a bit because I think you wanted to maybe keep this fountain in there, but you can barely tell it's a fountain. But I think what you liked was the sky. And so, eh, I lost the fountain. You, I think moving them closer and getting a better frame there. But uh, overall, you're, you're in the ballpark. This is just way too bright and way too harsh. <coughs> so bright and harsh is not awesome. Uh, one thing you can do if your light is too harsh is go into Photoshop, duplicate the layer, go and actually blur the picture like 50 pixels. Well, this is too low a resolution. Let's do 25 pixels. <coughs> and then... Uh, lower the opacity to where there's just it kind of takes the edge off it I'm down to 20% here and it just kind of takes the edge off that harshness so maybe 15% or 20% or mm -hmm. all right <laughs> Matt Chernisky says can we take a moment to appreciate the fact that the groom is cutting the cake with a broadsword yes 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 mm -hmm. all right hey uh, Mar is it Marcel Blanc am I saying that right Marcelli Blanc says, just mm -hmm. wrote a review for your new book on Amazon. I love it, by the way. Entertaining, easy to read. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah, so let me tell you Mark LeBlanc. Oh, is it Mark LeBlanc? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I owe you, Mark. Not for the review. I owe you for butchering your name. Oh, Marcelli my gosh. Blanc. Mark LeBlanc. Well, let me tell you well, why. Well, it's because we're getting the foreign, you know, we got so many yeah, people. Yeah, sorry, you're Mark. in that mood. But, Mark, thank you. This is why it's so important. I can tell people about the book. 
And that, you know, of course, everyone, everyone right. that ever wrote a book said, it's great, you should buy it. But when a, an actual reader posts a review, it makes all the difference in the world. So thank you very much for doing that, Mark. Yeah. It is much appreciated. All right. So this photographer, I think you got some stuff here. You got some juice. You're, yeah. you're on your way. And, you're, and you're, the bar, broadsword is like very, wow. <laughs> So, all right, you can check out a comment while I'm getting the so next one. So someone's asking about the private members webcast. Um, it's at 6 o'clock, and uh, it's about the uh, stuff coming up for the next year for members. Yeah, we got a lot of good so. stuff coming up that we haven't talked about, yeah. stuff that will be surprising and cool and neat, and we want to share it with you. Okay, let's take a look. I got three images here. Uh, this was obviously done in Phoenix, Arizona, and so it looks like, of course, Venice. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I really like this stuff. I really like it. I love what you did here with just a little bit of the gondola coming out. I, the black and white mm -hmm. treatment's perfect. The only thing I would say here, and what you're seeing is correct, it's what's there, but you're seeing the natural bright light up here, but this, this photo is about this. So I would go in here with a brush and just brush this down because you got a great photo here and it's not about that stairway. That stairway's there, I want it to still be there. There oh, you yeah. go, something like that. It's and amazing how those little adjustments can do so boy, much Boy, tell you what photo. it is, the little adjustments. You know what I love? Look how subtle the light is here, that's yeah. nice. In fact, you might even take that down just a hair. Because just what you did just drew your eye to that one side. Just yeah, went. because your eye's gonna be drawn to the yep. brightest thing and the brightest yep. thing was over here. Yep. So anyway, it's that's like easy boom. to fix. Uh, this is lovely. This looks great. This particular spot just outside of St. Mark's Square with a, a long exposure. If you could have put an ND filter on here, but I think you did a lovely job. I think the sky looks nice. I think your composition looks nice. I think that's a lovely shot. And I love the, the serenity of this shot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to find a bridge in Venice that isn't packed with people. It's hard to find a canal that doesn't have six boats in it. I wonder if they had to wait for that shot. Oh, I, I, yeah. I imagine they did. Sure a they little did. more contrast probably wouldn't hurt. It's a, it's a little, uh, wrong contrast here, a little flat looking. But this is kind of bright up here, which is okay. It looks, yeah. I don't know. I think this is very nice. I think all of your shots, you're, you're doing very nicely. I lovely. I really like that first one. I love Lee, and you'll grab some comments. Yeah. I, I have really nothing to say but yeah. about those little post stuff. But keep up the good work, good stuff. All right, we got somebody from Belgium. I love Belgium. And let's see. I've been there. I've been to Brussels numerous times and absolutely love it. I know there's more to Belgium you know, than just the Brussels. The best so. computer monitor for the most accurate screen color is what they're asking about. Um, I really think your opinion you know, on that is... The, the uh, Ezio? Mm -hmm. is that, am I saying that right? Ezo? Yeah. Izo? Izo. Izo? Easy I-O, right? Yeah. Their monitors are, I think... Kind of universally, they, they, they're the only ones or one of the only ones that does the whole RGB gamut mm -hmm. for Adobe RGB. Those are really nice monitors. Those are, they're not cheap. They're nice. Okay. But you're pretty much sitting on your, on your Apple monitor, Yeah, I'm right? on a Mac and I yeah. love it. Yeah. And Mac monitors are awesome. Uh, it's one of the things I think Apple does best is their monitors. Okay, we have three images here. One. Two. Three. Um, I think that when you took this shot, there was these icons up here. Just kidding. That's just a joke. Uh, this is very nice. I love the detail here. Uh, I think this is a nice shot, and it's obviously it's a violin. Uh, this is this is very nicely done. I, that's my favorite of the bunch. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, this is kind of a, a shot you don't see very often. I love the way the flute is in focus and the the flautist. Flautist is out. This one. There's too much post. This looks like an HDR shot, and I know what you're trying to do. You were trying to do the the nice detail in the hands. Y you went way too far. This is oh, like yeah. your amp's on ten. It needs to be on six. Um, it's just it doesn't look natural. The color looks weird. And now you can leave all the grunge on the. Is this a tuba? Maybe. It's not a trumpet. Yeah. Not a trombone. I think it's a tuba. But yeah, I'm with you. Like it's the the grunge over there is nice. Yeah, but the, the hands grunge here. Look just it looks too much. Put it a looks... mask and, and paint the original hands yeah. back in or paint the hands back in at 30% and start of just huge, huge, huge. So anyway, but 
you got you're a good photographer. You got a good eye. I kind of I like where you're going with this hand series, right? You got a series. You got it going. Don't throw this photo away. Just go redo it. Go back to the original and redo it. Yeah, you got something here. I like, a little I, bit like your, I like where you're going. I'm digging you. Super digging you. All right. So Mark said, uh, let me win the platypod and we'll call it even. So I don't have any control over that. <laughs> I, I wish yes. I did. Everything is random. I mean, the contest is random. Even yeah. entering the these... Um, the critiques are all random. Yeah, it's random. I mean, it's very random. It's I mean, random. That's what we've had people that it's their first time and they're getting picked, and people that have submitted ten times. It's yeah, just I know random. there are people that are that get disappointed that like, hey, I've, I've yeah. submitted five or six times. A lot of people submit a lot of them, and it's a giant group of images. And yeah. you, you know, I try to pick ones that I think will help. And I don't know anybody's name, so I can't favor anybody. I just look at these. I look at images and go, okay. You know, but you're just sent like random images. Yeah, it's they're, like, they're here random. You go. All right, let's take a look at some random images. Here's three mm -hmm. right here. So there's some really nice stuff going on here. So uh, I really like this, and I like them all. Uh, this is my least favorite because they're so far away. The sky is kind of meh. And they're so far away that I don't even think friends would go. You is probably that could you have guys? Came in closer, and it would have been really cool. Right. With this going down and the side. your horizon line's funky yeah. here. Now here, where it's crooked like that, it looks like they're on a hill, and you can get away with it. You're like because this mountain kind of looks straight, like that horizon over there looks like it would be straight. But then you have hills, and this is my favorite of the bunch. I love the backlighting. I love what you're doing uh, overall, and I like uh, this is very nicely done. I love this. Um, your sky is kind of meh, so you might like, you might, this one might be used with a little bit more, let's crop it in a little bit. I don't need to see a whole lot more of nothing because you just got a blank white sky, but that, that's nice. Yeah. That's too close. You know what? I, I don't need to see as much grass either. What if we could get them in like this? I think that's a stronger shot. You still see that they're in this big landscape, and you may say it's not as epic. But I think the the I think the like the engage I think they're engagement couple, right? Right. We're just very friendly models. Um, and this one, this one's very nice. I don't know about the crookedness. I think it's it's intentional, and that those are hills, and you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Let's just see if we cropped it straight. Does it look better? Or. I tell you what, I still like the closeness. You still get it's it's big here. I'll but. tell you, that's the one thing when you 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 when you do these critiques, a lot of times I, what I notice is you're telling you, you're always cropping in. You're always just going a little yeah. bit farther. Which I mean, I like the look. You know, that's what it. it I think sometimes we uh, try to crop it larger because we saw this scene, we saw everything yeah. there, but yet this photo is a little stronger if look. you come in yeah, a little tighter. Yeah, look at the great look on her face. Yeah. It's the look of love. The look of love. And see, that's Easy. what I think we get sometimes too emotionally attached to the her whole frame. Eyes. Just come in a little the bit. Look. The smile. Oh, All right, sorry. we got um, one more minute, <laughs> so we can do one more. All right, or Meredith sorry, is gonna. Gotta, she's gonna flip. Meredith will flip out, and when she gets angry, oh, uh, we gotta get on a right, show at six. Are you working on the thing I asked you for? Oh no, I didn't. Will you go but... work on it real quick? All right, while well, I look at the last one. Hey, we got some comments. Dave Clayton says there's less than 100 days till Photoshop World. Hey, that's true. April 20th through 22nd. You know, a bunch of people from the UK, like a whole group of people that watch the show, are all coming over. And if you're sitting there watching going, well, can I come over? Yes, you can. Can I hang out with all my friends from the UK? Yes, you can. Will Eric be there? Will you be there? Yes, yes, yes. What about Jen? Yes. Will Juan be there? Oh, yeah. This is Juan's like 20th <laughs> Photoshop <laughs> world. I think Juan was born at Photoshop world, actually. All right. Uh, D. Dale says, or yeah, D. Dale says, this is my first time watching you live, and I love how you critique and offer solutions. Most groups I'm in uh, just critique and don't offer any ways to approve. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind. That's what I'm, we're trying to do. Um, Tim, ha Tim Kiesman is using exactly what I used to do in Photoshop. So Tim, is, Tim, what you do for printing and making sure that your thing is bright is exactly what I do if I'm printing from Photoshop. I don't print from Photoshop anymore. I print from Lightroom. But when I did, I did what Tim says. Tim says, I always duplicate the background layer, change the blend mode to screen, and lower to 20% for going for print. Tim, that's exactly what I do. High five to Tim. Mm -hmm. All right. 
we're gonna look at one last image here, and this one right here. Actually, give me a second. I might go with, uh, we just did a wedding shot. Let's not do two of those. Hang on, I only got one more to choose. I gotta pick a good one here. Oh, I, I gotta show this one because I just like it. This is one of my favorites of the day. Look at this. So this is, I think, just geometrically, I love what this photographer's doing. See those lights, oh, how yeah. sparkly they are? That's F22. F22, yeah. F and let's see what their F-stop was. Look, yep, F look, look. F22. Dun, da, 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 da. That's the F-stop that makes starbursts like that. And I just really like where they're going with this stuff. I, I think that these I love are, that shot. they're That's doing, cool. I know, dude, they're, this is geometric stuff. Kind it's just great. Leads, it sucks you into it. And you know what else I like? That it didn't just assign black and white to everything, right? They, they actually have gone in here and like this one looks better in color and this one looks better in black and white. I think there is an art to knowing when to make something black and mm -hmm. white. I think a lot of photographers will sometimes use black and white to go, no, this is artsy. But I think this was, was well used that it's not all black and white. Can we do one more? Just, or just I'll do it real fast. All right, well, you're all gonna right, have to answer to Meredith. Oh God, don't on, yeah. distract her if you will. <laughs> uh, here we go, I wanted to get to this one and I'm glad I, I got this last choice. Um, all right, here we go. So let's take a look at the images. So one, two, another black hat mm -hmm. issue, three, and four. Th this is definitely my favorite because I love the lighting, I love the subtleness of it, and I love the background. It looks like you're looking at a painting. Uh, this That's is, what I would say. It looks like this a painting. Is, these all look like paintings. Interesting. Yeah. Now, here's the problem is I can't tell if these are photographs that have been painted or you're overdoing your skin sharpen or skin softening by a million. So I can't really tell. This looks like a painting, which is, that is, a, in this case, That's it a is look, a, a yeah. compliment and yeah. it's a look. I'm not trying to say anything bad. Uh, I really like this, but I love her, 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 her pose and, and everything that she's given you. This is interesting and it's got some, you know, effects and lighting and stuff in it. So if it is going for, they're trying to soften the skin, take it down yeah, a lot. 50%. Yeah. If you're going for, Hey, I'm going to do, um, what you call it. If I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm doing portrait photography, you've gone way over the top on the, but you're a good photographer. Post-processing stuff, when you're doing too much, it's easy to fix. Just don't do as much. Just turn it down. Yeah, just take that opacity. Just And, and you know what else? Sometimes what you can do is, um, you know, make a, make a layer on top and just turn, lower the opacity. Yeah, that's all it is, like opacity. Just, like, do all of these changes, and you're looking at this image, and you're like, wow, it's overdone. You know, sure. duplicate the image. I mean, uh, lower, like, do a, oh, this, it's more to exp I, I almost have to show the technique, but... Well, no, but it's just explain. I mean, it is. It's that, you know, you can look at it and you can go, uh, eh, 20%. You take it down 20%, yeah. it'll be good. Yeah. And that's some, when you're dealing with those some, opacities. Yeah, some of these you need to go like, uh, you know, a lot. It needs a lot. So anyway, but but that's pretty much it. Now, we literally are genuinely, we have to quit this on time, so we're going to have to wrap mm -hmm. it up. But for this photographer, I would say you're a really good photographer. I like your stuff. I like where you're going. You're You're very accomplished, obviously. If you can pull back on that retouching, it's not that you're doing the wrong retouching. It's just too much. Unless you're going, that's the look I'm going for. Yeah. I really want that. I want it to yeah. look like a painting. Then in that case, you're a boss. So you either have a lot of work to do or you're awesome. <laughs> you're on one end or the other. I but don't know which. the base of it, great photographer, you know. There it is. So excited. All right. Hey, look at Kathy's coming to Photoshop World. And, Kathy and Matt's trying to come to Photoshop I'm World. I'm coming. Look, Matt Charnisky, you got to come, yeah, Matt. Come, come on. on. All right. All right. So, April 20th, 22nd. Photoshop Adrian World. says hi from Belgium. All right. He says, I'm back once again for my lullaby from Scott. Oh, it's 11 p.m. there. Yeah, you need, you need, to, you need to go to bed. <laughs> All righty. So, here's All our right. giveaways. They're here now. They appeared on one of the breaks. Two. Two Lens Pro to Go gift cards, $50 gift cards, let you rent the lens or whatever you want from one of the best companies we ever get to work with. The Platypod Pro Max, so this is what you use instead of a tripod. You know, somebody, I think, was it on, I got an email today, and the photographer is in a wheelchair. And he said, mm -hmm. I can strap, the, it has a cut holes for straps. Yep. I can put this on my wheelchair, and it can be 
my my platform for shooting. Oh wow, that's but cool. But people use these for everything. They're very very awesome, and they're a sponsor of the show, and they are nice enough to give us one to give away. But if you're looking for for these, uh, we were I was talking to photographers about this. I I kid you not. So I sit down in the workroom at the at the college national, mm -hmm. and the guy next to me goes, "Hey, I got to get one of those platypods." <laughs> he goes, "I see you talking about them all the time. I got to get one of those." I'm like, "Yes, you do. They're awesome." And the book. Here's where you go to enter. Go to kelpie1.com slash contest. And you're gonna just going to say, hey, I'm watching the grid, but you need to tell us what you want to win. So In the comments. In the comments, say, yeah. I want to win the book, I want to win the Lens Pro to Go gift card, or I want to win the Platypod Pro Max. That's for the big boys. All right. Well, we have basically yeah. run out of stuff. I do want to mention, uh, of course, Photoshop World coming April 22nd, 20th to 22nd. Also, uh, w a big thing for us during the holidays were people giving Kelby One gift memberships. If you want to get one, they're still available, and they're awesome. And lastly, mm -hmm. I'm kicking off my Lightroom tour in March. I know the first two cities, yeah. Boston and Philly. Nice. Going to be in Boston. So I'm going to Boston and Philadelphia to start off my tour in early March. So uh, they're, they're updating the website right now to mm -hmm. add all the stuff. So if you go and book a ticket right now, well, it's impossible. But it will be in a couple of days. So go to Kelby One Live, but not now. All right. Well, Jen, Juan, and Meredith. Meredith. Meredith in the booth. Did we ever get a picture of Meredith? All right. Hold on. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. I'm just going to look at something. Don't show my screen. I'm going to look at something and see if I have any emails. I got nothing. All right. I got nothing. Hmm. Well. Hold on. Don't move. Eric's, there you go. You can show that. Go to video control room one. Oh, I don't, I don't have it connected. You don't have it connected? No. Did you really email it to me? Yeah. Because it's, oh, there it is. Hold on. I'm going to crop it. I'm going to crop it. It's a very nice picture. She's like, I'm not going to that. You I gotta can hear go. her in no, the showroom. No, come on. It's a great picture. Like, this I'm is not Meredith. switching to that. Come on. There's Meredith. There's Meredith. There's Meredith. Boy, she put that up there for a brief moment. Holy cow. <laughs> anyway, but we always talk about Meredith. She's, she's in the control room. The control room is outside the studios and down the hall. So you never get to see Meredith. And we were desperate to find a picture. And so that's, we're going to get you on the show one day, Meredith. Yeah, we're going to get Meredith on the show. She's very shy, but did. she's an awesome, awesome director and a very, very talented video editor. And uh, she does it all. And anyway, but she is uh, hiding in the room. So we, <laughs> we were sneaking to try to find a picture of her earlier. We had to raid her Facebook page. So anyway, thank you guys. Thanks, Meredith, in the booth there for showing yourself for five seconds. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Wani. Jen, thank all of you all around the world, including awesome places like Sweden and, Atlanta. and Egypt and Atlanta. <laughs> I was just going to say Atlanta. <laughs> and let's hold up our grid cups as we say au revoir, my friends. We'll see you next week here on The Grid. Stay thirsty. Stay thirsty, my friends.